Ever had the feeling that you knew what someone was going to say just before he said it? Or have you ever walked into a strange room and had the sensation that you'd been there before? Well, if you have, you've taken a small step beyond. Now watch a giant step. Oh, the bums. <laughs> well, that's getting to be more of a mess every day. Oh, hi there. Sam Whipple's my name. You've probably never heard of me. I don't know why you should have. I'm just an ordinary fella, same as you. Got my little dreams, I've got my little fears. I see a sign, keep off the grass, well, I keep off. Now, wait a minute, there is something different about me. You see, I invented a time machine. That's right, right now you're looking at a real bona fide time traveler. I admit it sounds fantastic, but it's really true. Let me see now. Anyway, I invented this time machine. It was crude, but effective. And my story begins in the city of New York in the office of a great scientist and world citizen, Dr. Jarvis, about 100 years from now, in the year 2052. working on just one problem. The answer negative. Oh, that radiation meter sketching out the pulse of a dying world. Radio facilities all set up. Yes, Father, they're ready. You go on in one minute. How does one tell the whole world that doom is only a few hours away? How? I don't know how either, but I do know this. That in a world of people which in 100 years have learned to live in peace, to understand each other, has matured, deserves to know the true facts. Fifteen seconds. I can't. You're a scientist. Would you like the true facts withheld from you? All right. My fellow human beings, what I have to say is based on proven facts. You cannot avoid it, you must believe it. In a few hours, you and I, all our loved ones, the whole earth will be dead. In the past few months, you have seen how thick vapors covered your cities and towns, your small villages and homes. And now I must tell you why this has happened. 
100 years ago, at the beginning of the atomic age, when the atom was a plaything, and the people of the world, like quarrelsome, headstrong people, a certain scientist discovered a rare element. After investigation, he placed it into a cyclotron and bombarded its atoms. A chain reaction resulted. A slow, imperceptible reaction. The scientist in his calculations made one small mistake, and though he checked and rechecked his findings, he never noticed it. The chain reaction grew and grew, the entire world slowly becoming radioactive. Recently, the count approached the parental's mark at which it is impossible for life to survive. This point will be reached within the next few hours. There is no escape. Listen. There is your heartbeat. This is an ironic tragedy which has befallen us. In the hundred years since 1952, you, the people of the world, have abolished war, disease, hatred and bigotry. But one tiny mistake committed by those before your time has outweighed all that in the balance of fate. I cannot give you hope, there is none. Nothing is left. Nothing to do now but wait. How much time is there? About three and a half hours. Let's check back once more. Perhaps something escaped us. No harm in trying. We've nothing to lose. You are right. Come on. We'll start from the beginning. We turn the teletime set to June 30th, 1952. That's when Dr. Thorn made a mistake. Oh, what a wonderful scientific age this has been. Through this machine, we can recapture the past, but the future, the future is out of range. Now we'll turn the location dial to New York in June 30th, 1952. There, watch. There, for the fifth time, it checks. Well, are we all set, Doctor? Yes, we're ready. Let's start the cyclotron. Wait. Wait, you've made a mistake. Oh, that's you mustn't. no use. Mary, it's too late to tell them. Why, Father, why? Look, we've been able to recapture time. Why couldn't I go back into the past and make them discover the mistake before they make it? We cannot change the past. Only a human being living before June 30th, 1900... 1952 could prevent this mistake before it happened. How could we get somebody from 1952 here? They weren't even close to time travel in those days. Wait a minute. There is one man. Is Sam Whipple, I think he's called. Yes, before all this happened, I... I amused myself watching him, a very serious young man, but quite amateurish. There he is, still walking away. Oh, is that a time machine? It looks ridiculous. No, no, it could never work. No, it's all there, it's all there. It's only that the wires are not attached to the proper terminals. If he could only adjust that, I think, I think we could control his arrival through this machine. Well, there's my time machine. You hear the generator going? Well, that's a secret. I was trying to generate enough power in my time vest to free me from the gravity of time. It wasn't easy on the electric bills, I can tell you that. Sam! Well, I had Sam? a sister, older. She means well, I guess, but... Sam Whipple, are you down there again? Sam, don't you hear me? talk to you. Sam! Oh, Sarah. Want something? Yes, here. 
What about them? They're bills, aren't they? Of course they're bills. Well, pay them. With what? There's nothing left after paying off for the last bill. Sam, it's not easy running a household today on your income. Well, I've got some money put away for a new suit and a pair of shoes. We could use that. And then you'd go to work looking like a hobo. And what would Dr. Thorne and the others at the laboratory say to that? Oh, I'd rather think they'd say nothing. Probably wouldn't even notice me. Just a lab assistant. Well, if you spent as much time on your work as you do with that infernal machine, you'd get someplace. You'd be someone. When are you going to give this thing up and stop daydreaming? Really, the neighbors are beginning to think you are crazy. I assure you, Sarah, I'm really very harmless. But as for giving this up, mm -mm. this is what may turn my dreaming into reality. As a boy, you were afraid to face things, and you still are. Yes, I am. I don't like myself for it. Never did have much gumption. Afraid to talk for myself, fight for myself. Well, that's why, don't you see? I want to give myself a chance in another lifetime, 500, maybe 1,000 years from now. Maybe I could do better then. You know, someday they're just going to take you away in a straitjacket. That's what's going to happen. Oh. And what about me? What's going to you happen know, to me? Sarah, I've taken care of you ever since your husband died, haven't I? Gave up my college career for it. I guess maybe that's why I haven't married either. I did think my first duty was to you. Well, you better stand back now, Sarah. I won't say it. I'm going to try it. You might get hurt. these wires, if I could only get them straight. Sam. Sam Whipple. That wire on the connection goes on the right. <gasps> Father. Yes. Oh. Oh. Mary. Father. Father. Yeah. I beg your pardon for bursting in like this, but can you tell it. me where I am? He made it. Sam Whipple, I'm Mary Jarvis. This is my father, no. Dr. Jarvis. No. Welcome to the 21st century. You're watching Sleep Core. Pleasant dreams. machine works. I made it. Oh, th thanks. Say, what year is this? June 30, 2052. Only a hundred years. I thought I'd go at least a thousand. Oh, well. Uh, say, your clothes, they don't seem much different from ours. I thought <laughs> they'd be kind Just a bit more comfortable, that's all. Oh, yeah. Mind if I look around? Please, do. Thanks. Father, shouldn't we ask him? It's almost 3.30. Only two more hours. I know, but I think we should give Mr. Whipple a chance to get his spirits. Say, wait a minute. How did you know I was coming? The teletime said you saw. Through it, we can look back into the past. That's how we knew. Hey, that's wonderful. Say, if I stayed here, do you suppose I could work on things like that and all of this? I'm a lab assistant with Dr. Thorne. You know him? We've heard of him. I think it... I could get to do some real studying at a good school, what? Well, that would take money, wouldn't it? That is not necessary. The government takes care of everybody's tuition. The government? Well, how can they afford it? What with defense and armies and things like that? That's no longer necessary. We are at peace with the world. You mean no Cold War with any country? No, we are all the best of friends. Yeah, that's wonderful. Oh, I could like it here. What about diseases? We've discovered the cause and cure of cancer, among other things. Cancer? You know, my father died of cancer. Please, I have a favor to ask. Is it possible for me to stay in this century, live my life out? I, I'd give value in return, I'd work, I, I'd do anything. I don't have to worry about my sister, the insurance to take care of her. Please, is it possible? I think so, but... 
radiation meter. Measures radioactivity. Oh, I see. We, we call that a Geiger counter in our time. Hey, wait a minute. Doesn't that mean there's something radioactive around here? The whole world? I, I don't understand. A nuclear bombardment in 1952 started a slow chain reaction which had steadily grown into an overpowering radioactivity. At 3.30, the danger point will be reached. The whole world and all in it will die. Oh, I don't believe that I can. See for yourself. Huh? Why do you think the fog is so thick outside? But how? A mistake? Made by your own Dr. Thorne and Mr. Adams. A mistake made by Thorne and Adams? Well, how can you be sure? We saw them in a teletime set. If only I'd known. You know now. Isn't it too late? For us it is. There's nothing we can do. But this happened in your time, Sam. You could stop it. You want me to go back? Oh, no. No, I can't. D D Dr. Thorne's a very important man. He wouldn't listen to me. Make him, Sam. You can make him. In the few moments I've been here, I I've known more happiness than I've ever known in a lifetime. I wish I could stay, if only for this one last hour. But it means the whole world's going to die, doesn't it? All the people. Okay, I'll do it. Can you help me get back? Yes. All right. I'll do the best I can. And then, if you don't mind, I would like to try and get back here. Oh, yes, Sam. Please come back. Okay, Dr. Jarvis. All right. It worked, Sarah. It worked. It worked. I don't know here, help me get what's this going on around here. I'll tell you later. What time is it? Uh, it's ten past three. Ten past three. It gives me twenty minutes. I'll see you later, Twenty Sarah. minutes for what, Sam? Don't have time. I've got to hurry. Sam! Sam! There. For the fifth time, it checks. Well, are we all set, Dr. Thorne? Yes, Adams. We're ready. Let's start the cyclotron. No, wait, please. You've made a mistake. You mustn't. Who in thunder is this? Say, I know you. You're one of the lab assistants, yes. uh, Whipple, I believe. That's right, sir. I'm sorry to barge in like this. I hope I didn't startle you. Whipple, or whatever your name is. What the devil are you talking about? I'm sorry, about? sir. I know it must seem crazy to you, but have you checked? You've made a mistake on your calculations. I know you have. But you've never seen these papers. Yes, sir, I have. A hundred years from now in a teletime set. Dr. Jarvis pointed it out to me. Jarvis? A hundred years? Well, this man's obviously insane. I'm going to throw him out. I'm not crazy. You've got to listen to me. Dr. Thorne, have you checked these figures? Of course, I've checked and rechecked at least five times. Well, then please check them again. The whole world depends on you. Since you know so much, where did I make my mistake? I don't know. But I'll tell you this. If you bombard the atom of this element you've been working on, you'll start a slow chain reaction. It'll grow and grow, and in a hundred years, it'll destroy the whole world. All right, Adams, I've heard it enough. Let's get going. No, you don't. You wouldn't dare. I think you have to check back now. I'm sorry to cause you all this extra work, but... You did make a mistake, you know. Why do you... Quit, get out of here and don't ever come back. You're fired. You can't fire me. I quit. 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 Hey, that sounds good. I'm going back to the year 2052 where a man can have a future. Good day, gentlemen. Burned. All burned. A mountain of work. Guess we'll have to start again. Adams, I wonder, do you suppose I could have made a mistake? Hi, Sarah. How's my favorite sister? You have gone mad. Yep, gone happy and mad. Where have you been? Where? <laughs> oh, I've been over to the laboratory. Told Dr. Thorne he'd made a mistake in his calculations. He didn't like it. You don't mean he fired you? Oh, he tried to, but I wouldn't let him get away with that. I quit. Quit? Yep. How we live? Oh, I've taken care of all that. I'm going back into the future, and I guess in that case, the insurance company consider me dead. So 
That'll leave enough money to make you comfortable. Well, goodbye, Sarah. Here we go. Sam Whipple, you're not going anywhere. Huh? I've seen to that. One of us has to have a head on our shoulders. Yes. Oh, no. I've smashed the machine. No. Maybe now you'll wake up and act your age. Oh, Sarah. Why? Why, Sarah? Can't you see it was destroying your life? I did it for you, Sam. Now, come along upstairs. Come on, like a sensible person, and I'll make us both some coffee. I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying right here. Here, Jarvis. I'm not coming back. I can't. Sam. Sam Whittle. I know you're not coming back, and I'm so sorry. Well, Sam, I know you feel small and ridiculous, but you're not, Sam. You're a great man. You've saved the world. Someday children will read about you in their history books. Sam Whipple, who came out of the past and gave us the future. Well, there's my story. Now, I don't know why anybody should call it fantastic, do you? But it is a funny thought, isn't it, to go through life with people thinking you're just a nobody, and then in a hundred years to have your great-great-grandchildren coming across your name in a history book as being quite a fella? Oh, why don't I catch you up to date before you go? As you can imagine, I felt pretty low down after all this happened. Yeah, pretty low down. But then Dr. Thorne discovered he had that made that, made that mistake, and, well, he looked me up and apologized very handsomely. He still can't figure out, though, how I knew about the mistake. Anyway, he gave me a darn good job. Time machine. No, I never did try to fix it. Somehow, I don't know how, I seemed to change quite a bit then. Oh, I used to go out more than I used to, more get up and go. Well, I even had enough gumption to go to a party one day at a friend's house. Met a very nice girl there. Her name was Ruth. Funny thing, though, first time I met Ruth, why, well, she reminded me a little of Mary Jarvis. Well, anyway, Ruth and I, we hit it all fine, and after a little while, she did me the honor of becoming Mrs. Whipple. <laughs> Just goes to show, I guess, a fella can have his future in his own lifetime, too. Oh, hi, honey. Well, I guess it's time to go now, so uh, pleasant dreams. You're watching Sleepcore, media for insomnia. the Sci-Fi Channel. Ta-da! So who'd you expect, Mr. Spock? It's me, Grandpa! <laughs> and do I have a show for you? We are gonna go on an adventure across time and space. So, let's go! Eagle. Go! Will you beat me down already? Right now! Good work, Igor. Yeah. <laughs> At least this time I'm here all in one piece. What do you mean, Grandpa? What do I mean, Grandpa? Don't you remember the time you, you left my heart in Alpha Centauri, you loony tomb? Good place for it. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the time you... Why do I even deal with you? <laughs> Back to our adventure. What we're gonna do is hop right into my spaceship and head out to the outer limits of the universe. And once we get there, we are gonna use my electro-robox combobulator to intercept waves of light that have been transmitted from Earth's past 
and future. Oh, I tell you, this is quite a machine, boy. <laughs> Plus, it has a money-back guarantee. <laughs> Some exciting plan, eh, Igor? Huh? I don't know, Grandpa. Sounds dangerous. What is it? Huh? A bat or a mouse? Besides, you gotta have some fun in life, kiddo. Besides, when it comes to our safety, you always like to raise the stakes. Stakes? I told you once. I told you twice. Never ever use that word in my presence. Okay. Let's go already. Five, okay, five, let's five, go. Five, four, three, two, one. All engines running. Launch commit. We have liftoff at 9.34 a.m. Eastern in daylight time. Boy, those sea forces, they really hit the spot. <laughs> So this is the edge of the universe. You know, it's just as I pictured it. Look! Igor! Igor! It's my friend, Flash! Flash! Please don't, Grandpa! What do you mean, don't, Grandpa? It's my friend, Flash, you nutty bat, you... Hey, Flash! <laughs> Not the sacred gong sound the final note which completes the marriage ceremony. <whistles> Great God, Teo, is this Just leave. Bye, sir. 
The Euclidean warlord says he has long admired the fit of your Levi's jeans. Tell him it is a frequent custom to wear Levi's jeans on Earth, denim and corduroy. It is one of the things I often miss so far from home. But I do not think the Euclidean could wear Levi's jeans. Oh, Levi's. Uh, he says Euclids do not exactly wear Levi's jeans. <laughs> Sleep core, sleep tight. of Tomorrow brings you an electrifying experience, a tense, tingling drama from The Lost Planet. Starring William Coburn and Merle Albertson. Before we know it, Christmas and Christmas gift shopping will be here. That's why I want to tell you about a very special gift for him. Cigarette? Yes, it is a beautiful box, isn't it? Imported leather with golden tooling and lined with beautiful moire taffeta. A man could use it in so many ways, for cigarettes, jewelry, knickknacks, and even though a box like this would make a grand gift by itself, thanks to Chrysler, you can give it at no extra cost with the greatest gift of all inside a set of Chrysler men's jewelry. The finest cuff links and tie bars are crafted by Chrysler. Here is your signet, the only gold-filled jewelry that's initialed while you wait. Yes, it takes only seconds to insert his own custom look initials and create the gift that's his alone. So give the gift within a gift. Your signet jewelry, just $13.50 for the cuff links and tie bar in the handsome leather-covered jewel box. If he likes the sparkle of precious stones, he'll love Chrysler's new Normandy set, capturing the beauty of expensive French gold links and set with imported hand-cut jewels in garnet, sapphire, and onyx colors, only $15. Here's another unique Chrysler gift set, golden mesh, inspired by the chain mesh armor of the Crusades, with space for engraving, only $12.50 in the leather-covered jewel box. If it's crafted by Chrysler, it's made with jeweler's quality to last undimmed through the years. Make it Chrysler for Christmas. Give the gift within a gift. A Chrysler jewelry set in the leather luxury of the Chrysler Jewel Box. And remember, your jeweler will gladly lay away your Chrysler gift set until Christmas for a small deposit. And now Chrysler presents The Lost Planet. Starring William Coburn and Merle Albertson. Hello, Dad. Martha, 
come over here and sit down. Dad, what is it? I've just completed my computation. At this time tomorrow, the Earth will be one flaming white inferno. What happened? That's not our show. Where's that picture coming from? Not ending, get the dust. I'm tired. Go to sleep. What do you say, Hank? Fine. Go to bed. Why should I go to bed? Okay, then don't. Don't ever get married, Hank. They're all nuts. The whole bunch you, of them. I promise you, I won't. I won't. I will never get married. But I ain't one thing, it's another. Why don't you stop? I mean it, Hank. Stop it. Get lost. Out of the hospital today, and there's nobody there to meet I gotta grab the bus all the way up here by myself. You know I was getting out of the hospital today. Where were you, huh? Where were you? Look, remember I got a very funny joke about a guy. Oh, I know what happened. That, that picture came from out of nowhere. Get a hold of Merle Whisker if you can. What is it? We, we were cut off. That picture through the window is going out in place of our show. Hey, Walt says we're going back on the air. Mort, Mort, how about running a film? We don't have any. Mort, we can't sit on the standby slide John, for half an hour. John, John, now what? Can you tell us what's happening out here? I don't know. It looks like we just lost the slide chain, too. Jim, it's all mixed up. We've got to feed some kind of picture to the network. I don't know what we're going to do. Yeah. Mort's coming out. Get the scene started again. Uh, all right, Jim. stand by, please. Look, will you get back well, to this? Stop, please. Are you okay? Let's have it quiet, please. Let's have it quiet, please. Get Bob Williams. Uh, have him make an announcement. Listen, John, look, will you tell us what is happening? The picture came from nowhere, Jim, and interrupted our program. And now we're back on the air. I don't get it. Uh, look, Jim, make an apology announcement so we think of something to do. A what? An apology announcement. Go ahead. Look, Bob isn't here. Do it yourself, please, Jim. Me? What'll I say? I don't know anything. Go ahead. Well, look, there's Roger DeCoven. He'll do it. Roger! Hey, wait. Hold him on that camera. Stay right with him, wait. Yes, we're on the air right now. Look, something went wrong. Look, Whitey, will you watch out, please? Look, uh, Don wants you to do a quick apology announcement. We lost her. Uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen, due to circumstances beyond our control. Why don't you get lost? Look at it. Just like the Sphinx. See no evil, hear no evil. Now, nah, what's the use? Get some more beer. Right behind you. I said, get some more beer. Do something around here for I'll a change. Get it. Now. She'll get it. you've done for me in two months. I got a letter from Dawson. Remember Dawson? Johnny Dawson? That's right. That's from me. That guy. Boy, did he used to buck for rank. Yeah, sure, sure. But it happens again. Wait, just stand around to Roger Merle by the crazy. Hey, one thing I can't understand. Look, let me just come into our studio. What, what else could it be? Jim, you're crazy. That's impossible. So what you mean we, we, we've been picking up another network's picture, Jim? Well, it must be. He says it's not coming from any studio here at ABC. We'll make this hard, you know, Jim. Uh, what then? Well, who knows? That picture in the window keeps interfering. Interview Mr. Wolf Worcester. Uh, keep it going. Just Roger, Roger. Wolf says we're back in the air again. You're on again. All right, let, let's have it quiet. Please, stand by. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, due to the lack of time, the program we had intended presenting this evening will have to be postponed until a later date. But, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Merle Worcester, the head of our engineering department, who has just been telling us that the two scenes we've just witnessed at the window are definitely not emanating from any studio in this building nor from any other network, for that matter. The chances of one channel interfering with another channel is impossible. Well, then where, in your opinion, is it coming from, Mr. Worcester? I don't think this uh, ghost picture is being transmitted from any studio at all. 
I think it's a living scene that's actually happening somewhere in this general area, perhaps in an apartment house. But how's that possible? I don't know, Rog. Maybe it's being reflected off an ionized cloud right in the middle of our wavelength, like a mirage. Mirage? Right. Yes. <clears throat> There's a theory that every sound and action we go through is preserved in the ether in the form of electrical impulses. That's pretty theoretical, of course. Well, do you feel then that that explains this? I can't explain this. Oh, no. Maybe something's yes. happening in our atmosphere tonight that's accidentally causing the right combination of conditions to produce this uh, special image. Hmm. You really feel then that, uh, that the scenes we've been viewing through the window are actually coming from some apartment, some, some kitchen right here in this vicinity, in this area? Well, then I'll come from the studio. I'll bet my life on. So I'll drink along. Your Highness. Your Highness, the Queen of Sheba. See no evil, hear no evil. What's everybody so quiet about? What's there to say? Anything. Recite a poem or something. Go on, recite a poem. Shut up. What did you say? I knew a poem once. It was a very interesting poem. They taught it in high school. It was, um, the gossips tell the story of the sparrow and the cat, the feline, thin and hungry, and the sparrow was exceedingly fat. That's all I remember, but I guess I don't know any more than the first part. I never forgot. What's the feline? That's a cat. Hello, feline. Boy, it looks good, Joe. How did you get so sweet, sugar? Get lost. If you two people will excuse me. Your Highness.
will control all that you see and hear. We will control all that you see and hear. We will control all that you see and hear. And all my nightly dreams are where thy gray eye glances, and where thy footsteps gleams, in what ethereal dances, by what eternal streams. 